give myself away.
Good afternoon, everyone. May we please stand? We are guided this afternoon to entrust our brother Errol Dunclair to the Lord, affectionately known as Aaron Moses. In the waters of baptism, our brother Errol or Aaron died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share this eternal glory. This we ask through Christ our Lord. party and he liked to sing and he liked to dance. Is he the same person? Yes. And so I know Ollie wasn't singing just now. 
What about you, Mr. Gen, a senior singer? And so I would like us really, if we have to give this man a grand send off, we need to sing. He brought joy to your hearts. He was the life at the party. And so let me give him a good grand send off for what he deserves. So let me just play that again and sing and turn to Jerusalem again. One more time. Enter into Sunday. And hence the reason you see the palms on each of the pews. And Palm Sunday celebrates Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, where he will meet his death. Iran or Errol is now entered into Jerusalem. And that's what we are celebrating. We are celebrating, we are giving off, giving him a hero's send-off, not a hero's welcome. A hero's send off of having lived a good life and having touched many lives along the way. And so I pray that, especially his children, Alison, Shana, and the Leon, where are you? Right? I pray that you'll be able to celebrate this man's life and to thank God for the ways in which he made a difference to his children and his grandchildren as well, to his sisters and brothers who are gathered. And for those who are joining us online, I believe it's on YouTube, that those who are not here, that at least you can be here virtually to be present for this significant moment in our brother's life. And so we gather as a faith community. And a faith community, a people of God, doesn't believe that this is the end. A faith community in which we believe in the resurrection, we believe that our brother having completed this part of his journey, now goes on to another stage in his life. And so we give him, almost like we've given him a flag, 
to go and wave to go to the other side. That's what we're doing. And so we thank God for his life, how he achieved the many milestones in his life, and we pray that God will grant him that eternal rest that we all journey towards through baptism. I invite us now to sit, as I will invite Chantal, who will give us the eulogy. Good afternoon, everyone. We thank you for joining us today to remember and celebrate the life of the Minister of Home Affairs, Love and Woman Worries. Errol Dankler, better known as Aaron Moses, a.k.a. Lat. He was born on 2nd November 1949 and departed this life on Monday, 4th April 2022. He was the seventh of 12 children born to Joseph Moses and Ivy Dan Clay at Grand Lagoon, Mayaro. Uncle Aaron enjoyed his youth in Mayaro with a reputation of being many things. A very big, strong man, a comedian, a limer and feta, a very heavy eater, a clean, well-dressed, sweet-smelling man, the owner of a tongue of pure acid, which many of us may have experienced at one time or the other. Uncle Aaron is rumored to be our grandmother's favorite because he resembled her deceased father. Therefore, she ensured that he carried the surname Dan Clay. Uncle Aaron took great pride in advising anyone who would listen that he was a Moses, but more so, he was also a Dan Clay. He was always a big, strong man, never fat, but solid, as the old people would say. This earned him the name Lat very early in his life. He died as Lat, even though he spent almost one month in hospital with post-surgery complications. Uncle Aaron was one of the family's comedians. Everything from his facial expressions, the long stoops that punctuated every sentence, to his lyrical ability, always made everyone from taxi driver to people in the barber shop roll with laugh. He could carry a lime all by himself. Many of us will remember his slangs for a lifetime to come. For example, laugh and cry does live in the same house. Don't take foul, tutu for egg. And friend with the ladies, but leave your pants and shirt by your mother. Lime and Fett was Uncle Aaron's middle name. He loved music. He was passionate about his vinyl record collection and his record player. He kept them meticulously clean and covered at all times, and no one dared to touch his things. We looked forward to every special occasion, especially Christmas, where he would play his records at top volume and ball out, why, when the music and the liquor hit him. Such was his love of a good time, that he spent many years living in various parts of the country just enjoying life and being happy. But throughout that journey, he maintained a special place in his heart for Miss Jocelyn. He loved his children equally and treasured his granddaughter. Memories tell the story of a man who could eat any amount of food. At one time, Grandma cooked 100 cow tongue dumplings with stew pork just for Uncle Aaron. And yes, he had it all at one sitting. He is still the only man I know who stewed chicken and fish together in the same pot. Yes, at the same time. According to Uncle Kenny, 
all the food Uncle Aaron ate in his lifetime cannot fit in our gallery. <laughs> he loved a good long bath at the barrel. Two hours and a full barrel of water was his trademark. If Uncle Aaron was bathing at the standpipe 20 feet away, you could hear him bathing because he was so strong. After his bath, he would bathe in cologne and dress up. He was always clean, well-dressed, and smelling sweet, sweet, sweet. He always cherished his possessions and kept everything very, very neat. All of us gathered here today to celebrate Uncle Aaron's life will never forget his acid tongue. Yes, we all know that that was also part of the man we knew and loved. We believe that he meant no ill, ill will. According to the old people, it so he is. Lucy was a brother's caregiver for over 20 years. The assignment was carried out with love, care, and plenty patience. To preserve the well-being of both him and his caregiver, Uncle Aaron was relocated to a retirement home at the age of 70. We ensured that he received the best care available and stayed connected to him throughout the journey. Today, as a family, we celebrate Uncle Aaron's life. We acknowledge the foundation lesson of our grandparents. We are family and we love each other despite of our imperfections. Uncle Aaron, we will miss you. May you transition safely and peacefully. Please don't argue with St. Peter when you see him. As a family, we will never forget you, nor will we allow your memory and slangs to die. Fear thee well, mighty warrior. Godspeed. Thank you very much. Are there any other expression, <clears throat> expressions of tribute? Anyone else would like to express a few words? We stand and let us pray. We are gathered today to pray for our brother that he may come to share Christ's victory. We pray also for ourselves that the Lord will grant us the gift of his love and consolation. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that our brother Aaron and Errol, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. May we be seated for reading from Scripture. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honorable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding, this is man's gray hairs. Untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding or treachery seduce his soul. For the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart. 
Coming to perfection in so short a while, he achieved long life, his soul being pleasing to the Lord. He has taken him quickly from the wickedness around him. Yet people look on, uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection his holy ones. The word of the Lord. blessed says the Lord take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world the Lord 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowd, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I shall not turn away, because I have come from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. Now the will of the one who sent me is that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. Yes, it is my Father's will that whoever sees the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise him up on the last day. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. May we be seated. On behalf of our parish community of St. Peter and Paul, I'd like to extend our sympathy to uh, Errol's family, Giran's family, Latte's family, Lat, sorry, Lat, sorry, Lat's family. We could put a little French date in our Latte. And so on behalf of our community, I extend our sympathy. The passing of a loved one is usually a trying moment for any family, period of grief. And so I pray that the consolation of the Holy Spirit come upon you and grant you a peace. And so that peace would be able to give you, allow you that period of mourning to, 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 to go through those motions in the absence of our loved ones. So that prayer really is extended to his sisters and brothers, so Edgar, Dulce, Stedman, Harold, Lucy, Kenny, Merle, and, well, I think Leonora is the, the, the part deceased friend. The Book of Wisdom was written at a particular period, so the first reading of today, it was written at a particular period in Israel's history. And part of that history meant that they were away from their homeland for a long time. When, they, when the people of Israel was deported to, to Babylon, they were deported to Babylon and they lost their ancestry, they lost their religious upbringing, they lost all that meant that was dear to them. Everything that they held on to was home. And so, like we can, we can identify with that today in people who are living abroad and they want to come home and they can't come home. They don't have a green card or they don't have, they can't return home for whatever reason. And the people of Israel, because they were in exile at the hands of those in authority, they were not free. They didn't have the freedom to worship and they didn't have the freedom to give expression to who they were as a culture. And so slowly by slowly, their religious tradition was dwindling away. And one of the great concerns for the people of Israel at that time, what happens when I die? Because at that time, they didn't have an understanding of the resurrection. You and I live in an era today where we work hard we work hard, work well, we are successful, we achieve many things, we build a family, and we live that way of life with, that, with no objective of what's going, on, what's going to happen on the other side. We live for today, we live for now. And for the people of Israel, the Jewish people, what happens when I die in a foreign land? What happens if I die in another man's country? Would God abandon me? Should I live this, still live the virtuous life? Because for many of us, we are brought up in a real strict home environment to live a particular way of life. And sometimes we may stray away from that path, but it's always there. You know, we were, some of us were baptized, and we may not be persons that would come to church regularly. We may come as the, the typical CEO, what we call the CEO Catholic of today. And the CEO Catholic of today 
Today is one of those occasions. The CEO Catholic of today is the ones who come to Mass or Church on Christmas, on Easter this, this coming weekend, and on occasions like this, funerals. But that doesn't mean that I lose my identity. I may not, have, I may not be a, a church rat or a person that's in church all the time, but I don't lose my identity. That I, that, that, that I live a particular way of life, I leave a signature like, like Aaron, I have a signature for life. I'm unique, I'm different, but I feel, and I, I, I'm pers I personally feel that he had a signature for life. And so his, his virtue from the Book of Wisdom was different. He lived a virtuous life, but in a different way. He was very friendly with the ladies, according to um, what was said. And that is, that is a gift. He had a way with words. He could give you sweet talk. He had lyrics. Nice. And that's a quality. We, may, we often may see that, uh, obviously, the people that he charmed along the way would feel a little bit intimidated because uh, I am one of many. But that's who he was. That was the recipe for his life. And the recipes for our lives, are, for each of us, is different. The, the, the recipe that how we live life could never be the same for each one of us. Each one of us is unique. Iran grew up in an era where they didn't have. Iran or Errol grew up in an era where we weren't blessed with what we have today. They knew what it was not to have. Lucy, am I speaking the truth? You all didn't, you all didn't grow up in a wealthy family, but you had everything. You all didn't have to, sometimes you didn't have shoes, sometimes you didn't go to school, but you lived good lives. And that would have been a reflection of your parents. And so there, there, there are things that, that, that we, we leave a signature behind. So Aaron and Lucy and who's the others again? Let me get the names correct. Aaron and Lucy and um, Kenny and Merle and Edgar and Dulce, Stedman. You all grew up in an era where, you, where, you, where you, your, your, your shoes was either purchased at Butter or, um, what's the other one, boy? Narwanis. You shop at Kupalani's. There was no KFC at that time. The only thing that you had that was fried chicken was a food van on the outside, that fried chicken on the spot. There was no doubles. You all, we all, that era is where life was simple. And you enjoyed life. And you made a difference to each other's lives. Virtue, therefore, is what that stands out. Virtue is not, a, is not about a man who is honorable or a person who is honorable. When the church understands virtue, it is a disposition whereby I am charitable, I am loving, and I am a person of faith. St. Paul says, faith, hope, and charity. St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Faith, hope, and charity, chapter 13. And the greatest of these is love. And that's one of the virtues. But there are four other virtues that, that mark a person's life. Fortitude, prudence, justice, and I can't remember the fourth one. But a person of fortitude would be something like what Iran was like. A person of fortitude was a determined person, a stubborn person. A person that uh, he, get no, he, he get no once, but he ain't taken no as the final. A stubborn, most times a person like that goes against the tide of what is around them. That you learn to fight and to go and achieve what 
you believe is, is God is calling you to. And that's why the gospel reading of today is that Jesus says that I sh- none of these, those who have been, he has been called, those who have been called will never be lost. That each one of us is chosen for a particular purpose. Whether you're a womanizer, or whether you're a saint, or whether you're a priest, whether you're a person that is, is on, the, on the fringes of society, each one of us is called for a particular purpose. And each one of us has a recipe for life. And we add flavor to other people's lives. When we add flavor to other people's lives, we make a difference. We put a smile on our face. We give correction, we give the rod of correction, but we do it with a purpose. Am I correct when he said he was a, he was a, he was, his, his words were toxic? Acid. Acid. And when, so when you say acid, what do you, what, what do you think, what, what, what comes out to me is a person who is firm. He tell his as it is. He had no license for his mouth. But he meant well. And that was the recipe for who Aaron was was he hold no water in his mouth and he hold no malice in his heart if you need to hear it if you need to get a cocktail I'm sure he will give you a cocktail too and that is who Aaron is and so when you remember him and all that his famous lyrics his famous, famous antics don't let it die don't let it just go down in our history because part of a funeral and part of remembering when we celebrate church here it is about remembering that man on the cross of what he did for us when we celebrate when we come together as church we are remembering what Jesus did for us when we come together as family and when you pray the nine nights and you pray the fourth part of the traditions you're remembering that person but there are two ways of remembering. We remember with our memories, the good times, the fond memories, the cherished memories. That's our memory. But there's another part of remembering that, that really brings a closeness to the family. When we remember our family, we bring them together. This is also, it's almost as if they, are, they have gone apart. And when we, when we have fond memories of him, we bring him back as if he's right here, right now. Through his words, through his actions, through his movements. He was a dancer. No, he was not a dancer. But he could have danced with the women. He could sing. All right. Oh, yes, he shows his records, eh? Yes. Ah, what are you going to do about his records? You know, you can't throw that away, eh? That is the man heirloom. That's like money in the bank. And so be careful how you treat with that. Yes. It's unfortunate that we don't cherish these things of past. Because he also grew up in an era where they had a track, cassette, and reel to reel. You don't know about that one? Aha, uh-huh, want to know? And so part of today's celebration is remembering and keeping those memories alive. That's why from the Book of Wisdom, they kept the memories of their past and their ancestors alive through worship, through, through, through tradition. And so he would have had his own traditions. Did he like Christmas? Did he like Carnival? Is there any part of the year he didn't like? So as you celebrate his, today's celebration is while it is, it is giving him a send-off. A send-off is he would have lived his life the best way that he knew and how he could. And so you're giving him that send-off today. But today is also about people that are gathered here right now physically and those who are viewing virtually to gather today to celebrate and to be present to each other. He brought people together, right? Always? Most times. And so today he's bringing people together. And so today is also important. Today, even though he may not be able to share his few words, 
Today he also brings people together, virtually and physically. And so we thank God for his life. Now, because he was a man that had an acid tongue, you would need to forgive him. That's important. Would you have told you anything? Yeah, yourself. Because having an acid tongue, sometimes we could take we could take it the wrong way. Having a tongue that a mouth that is has no license, sometimes we can take that the wrong way. So I want you to use this opportunity to forgive him for who he is. Sometimes he may have said things that really touch us touch a nerve. And so whatever you, you may have uh, that when you think of it, forgive him for that. Because he's only human, as you and I are human. And so we thank God for his life. We thank God he's, that he's able to, he was part of our lives. And that we pray that God would reward him for the good that he has done. One last thing. What was his profession? Before that. <laughs> hard work, he worked hard. But the hard work had results it. <laughs> part of John's gospel that I didn't read was a part where it says, I've gone, I've gone to, prepare, to prepare your place. And when I've gone and prepare the place for you, I will come back to take you there to there with me. And part of the analogy of that is that people often create spaces in their hearts and in their lives for each other. He created a space for each one of you, hence the reason you're here this evening. When you create a space for somebody, a place in your heart, you treasure that person. Treasure those memories. Just as how Lucy created a space for him, to look after him. Was it you alone? So it's creating a space for each other is what we are also invited to. Making space and making time for each other. We live in an era today where we are more concerned with other things and not creating a space or making a space for each other. Making time for each other. To make a room for somebody is means that I have, have considered what this person is to me and how I treasure them. Aaron would have been a man, even though he was a man of words, probably there was depth in his words, and probably he would have just said it out of the lyrics. But he created a space for people. I just want to use his example. Even though he was a womanizer, is the correct word? Am I being fair? Or am I being... It was here well, he, was, he charmed the ladies. He charmed the ladies. Even though he tra charmed the ladies, he was reaching a space that they were looking for. Some people are longing for friendship. Some people are longing to be heard. Some people are longing to be loved. And he touched that nerve. He touched people's lives where they were hurting. So it may look, it may come across as being a bad thing, but there's an element that he, he was able to bring joy to somebody else's life. Even though it may not go very far, he brought joy to people's lives. Through his words and through he, who he was. And so we thank God for this man. Treasure this man, keep his memories alive, and pray that God will grant him eternal rest and peace. Amen. May we stand there for prayers to be faithful. So we have a few people that are supposed to come and assist us with the prayers. So I need at least two or three persons to come up with it for the present faithful.
God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead with confidence. We ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Uncle Aaron, who is baptized, was given to the pledge of eternal life, that he may know that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord hear us. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. So this one here too. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that we may have the reward of their goodness. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. For those. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face face that they may see God face to face. Lord hear us. For the family and friends of our brother and sister, Uncle Aaron, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord hear us. For all of us assembling here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, For other deceased members of this family who have gone before us, that God would reward them with life eternal. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. For the family that is grieving at this time for the loss of their loved one, we ask our blessed mother, who would have herself witnessed the death of her son, the crucifixion and death of her son, that during this period of grief, that we would receive the consolation of the Holy Spirit. And so we turn to our Blessed Mother in prayer and ask her to intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Prayer was one thing that would have animated his life as well too, and so we turn to God our Father and pray the words that Jesus, our Savior, has taught us. Our Father. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sin, and grant them the fullness of redemption. This we ask through Christ our Lord. We may be seated for our collection. So our collection will be taken up that will be used for the uh, activities of this church here. So we ask you to be generous in your giving.
clip to the show is that for a period of nine nights, we pray for the pizza. Why? Why? Why we pray for nine nights? Because he died on the 4th of April, which was last Monday. And so today is the ninth night. So why we pray for him? The soul roaming during that time. Roaming going where? To visit all the people that he used to visit? Where was home? Where was home for him? Maloney Road. Okay. So we pray the nine nights in particular because the soul of the person continues to roam. But the place that it goes to is home. Where home was is where the soul will find, will find its place until the time is right. And so during that nine nights, it's critical for the soul and for the family. Because both the soul and the family are going through grief. He would have known Lucy's voice and he would have known all your voices, those who were closest to him. And that's why you go home. Where we feel comfortable, when we understand ourselves, our most secure place is home. And so the soul goes to his home, that, that's the only home that he knew. And so he goes there, and so when you pray for him intentionally, it's for him to be able to, to come to that closure. So you're, 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 tonight, you won't pray tonight because today is his funeral day. So you won't need to pray tonight. But those nine nights are critical for the soul. Forty days is, is, is another stage in the, in the journey of the soul. Because when the soul, when the body, when the soul leaves the body, it leaves the body at the point of death. And so it's it's roaming until we say forty days. Because based on scripture, Jesus ascended to the Father on the 40th day. And so 40 days is another stage in his journey towards God. But it's not really for him, but it is for you. And so that 40 days, you're going to say to him, like anything else, when you've when you when you been together with a person who's your brother or wife or husband or child, and you know that person, and they have gone, it leaves, a, it leaves a void in your heart. And so that 40th day is really for you and not for him. He has now empowered you. When Jesus ascended to the Father on that 40th day, he empowered his disciples to go on and make disciples of other nations. So he empowered them. Now that Aaron is gone, he has empowered you with his recipe for life. So it lives on in you. And so the 40 days is for you really to move on with your life during this period of grief. And so because he's a man who celebrated life and believed in his church, you do two things on that day. You offer a mass for him and you also gather at home and share a meal, especially if it's a dumpling with what it is you say in the East eat? Right, stew pork and dump dumpling. Nice. That was his favorite? Right. So on the 40th day, you're going to gather dashing and stew pork, the way he like it. Right, eh, Lucy? Nice. And seeing that he can handle the liquor, can I handle the liquor? Right. You open the best body, bottle of Johnny that you could get and crack one for him. I think the fellas all they could manage that, right? Nice. So you're going to do that on the 40th day. On his birthday on the 2nd of November, you're going to also celebrate that day. Have a mass offered for him. Usually for Catholic families, I will tell them, so he died on the 4th of April, the 4th of every month, you have a mass offered for him. That's for persons who are real, real. Well, this family is a strong Catholic family. So I would encourage you to have a mass for him every, the fourth of every month for the next year. So come the fourth of April next year, that's when you bring that to a close. But you have it for his birthday and 
Well, obviously, Christmas was a time that he enjoyed, so he celebrated his birthday as well, too. Christmas time as well. So that is, that's part of the tradition, Catholic tradition, of remembering the faithful departed. Right? Um, so the one year, so the nine days, the one year, and the forty and the forty days, what you do. As a church, we also pray for the faithful departed. So I would like to invite a member of the family to come and sign the Book of Memories. And the Book of Memories has to do with inscribing Aaron's name so that the church community remembers him. So you're going to inscribe his name here, and the church will continue to pray for him. Even if you forget, the church won't remember, because all masses that we celebrate, we always remember the faithful departed. Well, you can put a slash and put down, Aaron, Moses. Which one do you go by most? Right. Nice thing. So this is what we call a book of memories or remembrance book. For this year we had twelve persons for this year who were buried via this church. That's this church, and that we had a few others in Guayaguayari. And so it is the church that remembers all its faithful departed, especially when it comes to uh, all souls. What I'm going to do now is to sprinkle the coffin with holy water, sprinkle uh, incense the coffin, which is, is really is a soul. When we incense, when we incense, you, when we use incense, is to give reverence, remembering that we are a child, we are a child of God, and so we give reverence to this person. That's what the incense will symbolize. Holy water is to remind us of his, of his baptism, and his now transition into. The, Another, another stage in his journey and the sprinkling of the dude to remind us that from the earth we came and to the earth we shall return dust to dust, ashes to ashes before we go our separate ways let us take leave of our brother may our farewell express our affection for him may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope one day we shall joyfully greet him again with the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself into your hands, Father of mercies, we command our brother in the show and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed on Aaron Moses in this life. They are signs of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. So while I'm doing the ritual, we will sing into your hands.
Because God has chosen to call our brother from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. So I will invite members of the family to come and sprinkle some sand on the coffin, taking a pinch and sprinkling it anywhere. Well, children, sisters and brothers, Anyway, sprinkle it anywhere. He was a man who never drink alone. He had partners in crime. Any of them here? <laughs> Come, brother. Come and sprinkle one for him. You can't take, you can't take a drink with him right now, but you can sprinkle some sand. <laughs> you can't pass through this life unless you touch somebody become somebody good friend or partner. You don't leave this world without touching somebody else's life. Without sharing a vision of what you want your country to be. 
where there's all talk, where there's good talk, there's somebody that you share. And for those who are viewing online, while you can't be here physically, I sprinkle this water for you. Wherever you are, this one is for you. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his own in glory, for he is risen and the firstborn from the dead. So let us command our brothers to the Lord that the Lord may grace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Amen. May we stand for a final blessing. Eternal rest be granted unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed and through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Join with me in saying this prayer together. We are not saying farewell. We are more saying see you later, Iran. We go meet again. And so join me in this prayer by extending your hands as we pray together. Iran. Iran. Oh, do better than that, you know. Iran. May the angels lead you to paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you. And lead you to the holy city. The new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you. And lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer. May you, Era Moses, aka Latte, not find it in the rest. Amen. Era. Era. Era boy, it's time. May the peace of God, which is beyond all you understand, then keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, our Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The funeral service of our brother Aaron Moses is ended. Go now, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn. I'm walking on my way to the Lord.
sacrifice you provide your spirit and I will open up inside you provide your fire and I'll provide the sacrifice Spirit, I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. You provide the fire, and I'll provide. Sacrifice. If you provide your spirit, then I will open up inside. If you provide your fire, and I'll provide your sacrifice. You pull out 
touch your spirit And I will open up inside sacrifice you pour out your spirit and I will open up inside fill me up God fill me up God fill me up God fill me up Just one more of you. Fill me up, more of you, less of me, more of you. see more of you Promise 
darkness keep a light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop
I was a little girl listening to my grandfather say, this place is not my home. God promised he was preparing a place where we would live with him forevermore. Where there be no more crying, no more dying, no more sadness, no pain. The city of a living God, a place of unimagined blessing. Yeah. 
What am I living for? I want you close to me That's all I know I want you more than two Because I love my soul That is the truth eh? What am I living for If not for you what am I living for? If not for you. What am I living for? If not for you. Jesus. Nobody else. Nobody else. We
give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Give myself away so you can. Come on, let him know. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. would happen if a generation embraced this. Come on, tell me. Here I am.
Just see. 